So let's talk about storage a little bit. So in the early days, all we really needed was a way to get those individual bits, those zeros and ones or ons and offs, into a computer. And we would literally, in some of the early ones, punch a hole into a piece of paper to say whether that was a zero or a one bit. This is called a punch card. It has a lot of little holes in it. These holes correspond to little bits of data. So if something is either punched or it's not punched, it is super easy to understand. Of course, the downside is that is a very small amount of data. If you wanted to do something with this, you would have a stack of thousands of these. And if you dropped your stack and it went all over the floor, you were in for a really bad day trying to sort those out again. You'll see pictures in a lot of the older computers, ENIAC and Colossus, for example, where they do the same type of thing, but they use a paper tape. And it will have holes punched in a tape that'll be fed through in really fast pulleys. And that's a big improvement on punch cards, but you still get trouble. Uh, occasionally, for example, these uh, paper tapes would be going through so fast that they would catch on fire, which is uh, suboptimal in a computer system. When I came into uh, computers for the first time, we actually used cassette tapes. Much like this one. And you could actually hear, these are really made for audio, but you could actually hear the data making a sound as it went into the computer. It was a big relief when we finally got to the floppy disk. This has a little magnetic wheel inside. I don't know if that's going to come through on the camera. That spins, and you could store a lot more on these. They were super convenient to use. They didn't hold much by today's standards, but uh, they held a lot by the standards of the day. The next big step up was the hard drive, and we're still using these in an awful lot of places. The hard drive looks something like this. There are a couple different formats for it. A little box, but on the inside, you have a platter that is, was magnetic, and a little arm that would move around. If you've got a record player, that's somewhat like an older mechanical version of a hard drive. And these could hold huge amounts of information. The, the newer ones still can. Uh, now these have uh, frequently have chips. They don't have any moving parts on the inside. Those are called solid state drives. They work generally the same way except uh, without the moving parts. Now it's often common to have chips soldered on the board that you can't remove or change out, but they're really fast and really cheap to make. So that's permanent storage. Let's talk a little bit about temporary storage. Temporary storage, or RAM, may look like this. This is RAM for a laptop computer. Uh, you still find a lot of computers that will use RAM like this. For the Chromebooks, the RAM is usually soldered straight onto the board. It can't be changed or upgraded, uh, but it is really cheap that way. 